Clearly, science fiction films appeal to the imagination of lovers of the what-if scenario, hypothesising different pasts, presents, futures, worlds or people. But they serve also to increase awareness of situations and attitudes on present-day Earth and its reality. Science fiction films can allow us to study familiar societal, human and or psychological issues, but examined in unfamiliar contexts, with a view to lending clarity to various aspects of these matters. It is perhaps hoped that by transposing issues, or by exploring potential outcomes in the future of policies being considered at present, these issues may be viewed with greater objectivity and understanding, enabling us to deal with concerns and problems more reasonably and with greater perspicacity. Science fiction started early in the history of cinema, just a few years after the birth of the moving picture in the 1890s, when Georges Méliès created Le Voyage dans la Lune in 1902. Demonstrating the potential of mankind in terms of space exploration, as well as the potential of the relatively new moving picture, Méliès also incorporated implied criticism of colonial attitudes in the way in which inhabitants of the moon are treated as subordinate by the conquering and rather pompous scientists an early indication of the way science fiction can be used to make pertinent points about human society and nature. Of course, the film also suggests that technology can open the way to possibilities previously thought closed or not considered at all, and that imagination and ambition may lead to reality. Science fiction need not, of course, be about journeying through space and time to meet inhabitants of other worlds, but may be focused on society and Earth, with its rich source of material for discussion and criticism. In 1927, Fritz Lang made Metropolis, a massive film in terms of length, about two and a half hours, budget, over five million Reichsmark, scale and ambition. It's a story of love, industrialisation, mechanisation and the chasm between ruling and working classes. A truly remarkable feat of filmmaking which uses its genre to make clear the social ills it sets out to depict and for which it seeks solutions. The Day the Earth Stood Still was made in 1951 by Robert Wise shortly after the production and implementation of nuclear power and weapons. An alien, Klaatu, arrives on Earth to warn Earthlings of their responsibility towards themselves and others in the universe now that they have discovered nuclear power. The Earth will be watched and judged by alien forces who will not hesitate to protect themselves from human aggression. That the warning came from an obvious outsider was intended to lend even greater weight and authority to the warnings mouthed by many at the time though clearly such warnings carried no weight with leaders of major nations at the time as they embarked on the great arms race that marked the 50s, 60s and 70s, and which indeed maintains a presence to this day. The remake follows a very similar path, but broadens the concept of protection to protection of the life-giving earth from the race that threatens its destruction, humanity. Forbidden Planet, made in 1956 by Fred Wilcox, is a spectacular film whose influence has reverberated across much of science fiction ever since, yet it has its roots in Shakespeare's The Tempest, and is actually a study of ego and one man's obsession with having things his way. Of course, the film takes this fundamental notion and carries it to entertaining extremes, while incorporating observations on man's place in the cosmos, love, personal development, loyalty, duty, ego, vanity and curiosity. All very human traits laid bare against the background of a secluded inhabitation on an isolated planet, and laced with humour and some quite astounding special effects. Quite apart from the artistic success of the film, it also provided something of a blueprint for a franchise that has made its presence felt for some 50 years as I speak, and which is showing no sign of disappearing. Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry created Star Trek to give expression to studies of our most human traits set against a backdrop of excitement and adventure in space. Over the years, it and its offshoots have dealt with a myriad of emotions and issues such as racism, responsibility, friendship, religion and seeking God, duty, love, anger, remorse, pity, envy and doubt over one's purpose in life, to mention but a few. And all of this is set in imagination-inspiring backgrounds and plots. Inspiring scientists to actually develop technology which appears in the series, and even inspiring some to study and learn the completely fabricated and artificial Klingon language, few TV shows can lay claim to have exercised such an influence, not just on viewing habits, but on behaviour and society as a whole. And the reason is not the sci-fi environment, but rather the profound humanity of its characters. In the late 60s, there started another highly successful and innovative franchise, Planet of the Apes. Although it spawned several film sequels, a TV series, a remake and a further reimagining of the basic premise, 
none has managed to outshine the dazzling 1968 original. The film sums up in many ways what science fiction films invite viewers to do, to see ourselves and our society in a different and perhaps clearer light. Using role reversal, the makers of the film try to shed light on various aspects of our society, focusing on our treatment of animals, religion and science, man's ego and curiosity, and of course man's willingness to inflict pain and suffering on his fellow man. Also in the late 60s, the mighty 2001 A Space Odyssey was released. While brilliantly made with quite staggering special effects, I'm afraid this story of inspiration, curiosity, identity, faith and artificial intelligence left me somewhat cold and uninvolved. For me, it was more of a lesson than a drama. Hot on his success with Planet of the Apes, Charlton Heston made a few more forays into science fiction in the 70s, notably with Soylent Green, a film based on the contemporary obsession with overpopulation and the inherent problems of food supply and health care, and which offers a novel and repulsive way of dealing with such matters. Combining science fiction with the mystery genre, Heston investigates various deaths and in the process uncovers a variety of unsavoury truths about the society we are predicted to have created. Apart from the aforementioned food and health problems, these include benefits accorded to the wealthy, a rather disdainful and misogynistic attitude towards women, and a rather autocratic view of authority and policing. This is a prize example of the way in which science fiction can be used to extrapolate directions our society and culture may take in the future. Rollerball, made in 1974 by Norman Jewison, was another fascinating, if at times slow and stagey, foray into a possible future in which sport, in particular the sport of rollerball, has replaced war and aggression in society. Society is managed by a group of corporations run by faceless and characterless individuals whose sole purpose is to maintain the status quo. Rollerball exists to prove that teamwork is essential to success, and the individual counts for very little. To ensure a happy life, citizens need only accept without question decisions and measures taken by heads of corporations. Jonathan E., played by James Caan, proves to be a threat to corporate-run society as he takes on cult status with fans of rollerball due to his skill and longevity in the game, and measures are taken to ensure his influence, indeed his very life, will be curtailed. As Jonathan queries his directives, he starts to question first various aspects of corporate-run society, and then its very core. This is another notable example of the science fiction genre turned on the nature and mores of society, this time with a warning of the dangers of corporate-run society. In 1977, George Lucas made Star Wars A New Hope, a film many consider the greatest science fiction film ever, followed by two sequels. The first trilogy undoubtedly combines all the elements to make great science fiction films. Love, courage, friendship, principle, family conflict and resolution – and even religion and faith are distilled down to the force. All of this is delivered with a sharp script which develops themes and characters within a structure of adventure and with humour and a lightness of touch, allowing audiences to enjoy the action while engaging with the underlying issues. However, the second trilogy suffered from a bloated budget, bloated action sequences and special effects, a dull as ditchwater script, tired and wooden performances, overemphasis on the political theme, and a nominee for the most annoying character in the history of cinema, in Jar Jar Binks. On top of all that, the engagement and youthful belief in principle have all but gone, leaving behind a shallow copy of the original and questions as to whether the producers actually understood what was appreciated and admired in the original. Alien is a film that works across several genres. Science fiction, thriller, suspense, mystery, etc. Building fairly slowly until the action explodes on screen quite literally, the film then proceeds at a steady pace, delivering shocks, horror, suspense and action as the crew are hunted by the vicious but valuable alien they have unwittingly brought on board their vessel. Yet the film does a great deal more than that. Underpinning everything is the fact this is a merchant vessel whose owners are devoted to profit. The company considers all crew members expendable in the face of vast potential profits to be made from studying this creature and developing weapons from it. The android Ash apparently malfunctions but is in fact slavishly following its programme to capture and protect the alien being. There is even a nod towards social division among the crew and the question of the value of their own lives, and the issue of the place of women in society is raised as those women in the crew appear to be treated as second-class citizens, though Ripley proves the detractors mightily wrong. These themes recur regularly throughout the series, especially that of profiteering at the expense of employees' lives. Blade Runner is a slow, atmospheric and fascinating film about our search for answers to the eternal questions of who we are, 
where we came from and what our purpose is. Deckard is a detective tasked with finding and retiring or killing replicants who have malfunctioned and who may pose a danger to humans. Some of them seek out their creator in order to gain answers to questions about their origins. In the course of the film, Deckard is forced to question his own nature and what it means to be human. The Terminator films investigate the area of artificial intelligence, with mankind perhaps becoming too clever for its own good and creating machines in the future which develop consciousness and which send back through time killer robots to prevent the rise of resistance movements threatening them in the future. Time travel and its consequences have long been a favourite plot source for science fiction films, and they are dealt with well here. The second film in the series is probably the most successful as it examines leadership, friendship, human rights, duty and humanity. Science fiction based on the philosophical precepts of Plato, The Matrix manages to combine action and excitement with some rather complex philosophical concepts, no mean feat. Basically it boils down to the division of the body and the mind, or soul. Plato believed, and influenced most of Western philosophy and religion in the process, that knowledge is innate and the body serves only to draw that knowledge out of us. It follows then that the body may be dispensed with if contact can be made directly with the mind, which is the centre of reality. Here we have a film that investigates the possibilities of a world in which the mind rules, but the mind is not susceptible to the same physical restrictions as the body, leading to thrilling visual and intellectual spectacles. The sequels appear tagged on and, like Star Wars before them, develop the spectacle but fail to live up to the premise of the original. Cloning is a popular topic among makers of science fiction films and has been treated in a variety of ways. The Sixth Day, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, offers cloning as a premise for a series of action sequences and is fairly light-hearted and entertaining. More interesting and thought-provoking is Moon, in which a lonely technician on the moon slowly uncovers the truth about himself as he questions his past and considers his future. This deals nicely with identity, the value attached to life and the whole issue of considering clones as second class or inferior. Oblivion is a beautiful looking film which deals with the slow discovery of truth about reality despite appearance, our dependence on memory in assessing reality, the inherent value of life whether cloned or not, the value of freedom and the spirit to fight for it, and of course love which inspires acts of self-sacrifice. Elysium is a much disparaged film warning of the increasing division in society between the haves and the have-nots. The wealthy live a life of luxury and good health on board Elysium, a satellite circling the earth, while the poor scrape a living on ravaged earth and face poverty and health issues. Denounced by many as left-wing propaganda, the film nevertheless raises issues of freedom and fairness in society today. Prometheus, like Blade Runner before it, deals with the age-old questions of identity, purpose and the overwhelming desire to meet our maker. Criticised by some who wanted this prequel to Alien to resemble the original more closely, this film is much more ambitious and thought-provoking, inviting us to ponder the possibility that if we were to meet our maker, perhaps we may be disappointed. These thoughts are, of course, entirely subjective, and the films mentioned are not intended to be a comprehensive list of the best science fiction films available but rather films that offer some insight into the themes and topics that can be usefully developed within the science fiction genre. My thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find it of some value.